Welcome back to the quiet, peaceful town where we just robbed a billionaire of a large amount of his money. It's the Pokemon Black No Experience Run, and we are leaving Undella Town after that heist and getting out of here to Route 14. So, uh, yeah, I apologize. Last episode was a bit of a breather battle wise. This one will not be. No major bonus bosses in this part, but a few pretty intense normal battles, so you'll look forward to that. So, this is Route 14, uh, a misty place full of rivers and waterfalls. Now, this is in fact the main reason why I needed a waterfall user in my party. Uh, but, for that, we're gonna have to take on a black belt. Let's see what he's got. On a bridge, fighting traitors! It's a perfect picture! Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of reminds me of, I don't know, <laughs> sounds like it could be a song or something. Anyway, Black Belt, J oh, that's actually kind of funny, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I, sorry, I, in a game I was translating, I had a, a boxer character whose name I localized as J, but anyway, um, uh, I'm gonna go for a Joe, that's bad, uh, bad, 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 ooh, okay, right. Gotta go for agility here, heal, and then hopefully after that close combat defense drop, the next Z headbutt should KO, provided I don't miss. Or I could be faster and not have to heal. Again, provided this one in KOs, I really hope it does. And it did. Primeape doesn't really have the best in the defense department anyway. Also, Primeape's nose is really huge in this game. Uh, it's funny, sometimes Primeape's nose is relatively normal size and sometimes it's enormous. It kind of varies with its sprites, it's sort of weird. But anyway, definitely gonna want to heal here because uh, there's no way I can take this thing out of one hit. Scrafty is pretty defensive. And that would have been super effective if this was Gen 6, so I'm very glad. In fact, I'm really glad because if it was super effective, it might have uh, won in KO'd, or very nearly won in KO'd. Let's see how much this does. Oh! Oh well, thankfully I got the attack buff, which is good. Rock climb, really? 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 Interesting. Okay, now he's gonna do this. Now, for some reason, a lot of Scrafties, even in Gen 6 in battle facilities, just seem to love Focus Punch for some reason. Which is hilarious, because it's very easy to stop, uh, provided that uh, my Meteor Mash doesn't miss. Please don't miss, thank you. Okay, so Scrafty taken out. Do you have any more? I don't think you do, do you? Oh no, you do! You have Polyrath! Okay, uh... Let's see if with an attack buff I can take you out with one Zed Headbutt. Uh, both of my main staff moves having less than perfect accuracy is gonna come back to bite me one day, I know it. But for the time being, I didn't take it. Yes! Speaking of uh, imperfect accuracy, Dynamic Punch! Thank you for using that, and thank you for not being a cheater and hitting with it. And it is gone. Oh, I still remember that one battle CD that relies on hitting with Dynamic Punch all the time, which is pretty much just pure luck. But anyway, one trainer down, that wasn't so bad. On a bridge, a sentimental trainer after his defeats. Yeah, anyway, let's keep moving. But I think we're going to have to heal or switch out someone else to the front position. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's put Bones in. Let's give her a chance to do some stuff. Trainer tips. Uh, I believe that is uh, your trainer class, they mean. Uh, yeah, so that does affect what you show up as to people um, in other games, which is kind of cool. 99th was. <laughs> now, this reminds me of that weird um, thing in the anime with um, that character who had a hunt who wanted to go for a hundred straight wins and who had an inexplicable southern accent for no reason uh, and inexplicably paused in his sentences um, and inexplicably was apparently the first ever filler episode in the anime um, because while technically speaking the samurai episode didn't really have much plot advancement a Pokemon did evolve during that episode so um, Speaking of filler, this battle may as well have been totally pointless. That certainly went a lot better than the one camera up person. But anyway, yeah. A Pokemon did technically evolve in the Samurai episode, so... I think the real definition of filler is an episode that you could remove completely and it would not affect continuity at all. And, uh, I'm pretty sure the AJ episode was the first one, um, that was like that. So, we can see Dark Grass here, and there are definitely a few Pokemon that we're going to want to catch here. Wow, they're really throwing up, um, throwing trainer tips at us, aren't they? That's, um, 
Actually, uh, Gen 6 introduced so few new Pokemon, we could actually store every single Pokemon that is in Gen 6 even now. Kind of sad, that. But anyway, we're going to fight Ace Trader. Ah, 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 that name is... Uh, well, will she give me ultimate despair? We will see. Perugly. Okay, now, the, the thing I know about Perugly is, despite being really fat, he's actually extremely fast. And it has his... Uh, I mean, like, I don't really know how to feel about Swagger being banned by Smogger. The thing is, while I admit it is kind of luck-based, it, it, it's a gamble. It can backfire on you really, really badly, and I think because of that, it doesn't deserve to be called broken. It's annoying, sure, but the thing is, if they don't hit themselves, you run the risk of being severely, um, put at disadvantage. And I'm screwed, yeah. <laughs> uh, no way I was getting through that. Mikushio, uh, kind of failed miserably there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even healing when I've done anything, so I guess Iron Man time. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't use Thunder Wave here, I had this weird feeling that this thing had Limba. I think it actually might. Oh, I don't know if it changes to Thick Fat. I kind of forget. That could be a problem. See, yeah, I know that uh, Glamiao can have Limba. I'm just not sure if Perugly can, so I was just a bit worried about running into a... Ooh, that's nice. Two-hit KOing. Oh, that's not nice. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, avoid... Oh, okay. Please finish it. Oh no! Oh, that's bad. Um. Oh, okay. I'm probably gonna have to switch out from this because uh, attract and confusion. This Perugly, admittedly, has a somewhat annoying move set because it's got attract, confusion, and chance of paralysis with body slam. So parafuse attract all in one. Venus from Colosseum would be proud. I still think it's funny that one of my attempts at Colosseum, I actually beat Venus by parafusing her last Pokemon. <laughs> I was gonna like, take that! <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Oh, speaking of, uh, now you know how I feel. Please be faster. No! Ah, uh, bye-bye, Aqueduct. I mean, did I seriously do that? Oh my god, I just called one of my Pokemon Marilyn. Okay, breakout, sorry. <laughs> Just go to show how much his Pokemon stuck in my mind. Aqueduct was amazing. Took on Giratina, single-handedly preventing a total party wipe. Just tell me to unintentionally pay tribute to that, yeah. Seriously, go watch that Platinum Nuzlocke, it's awesome. Like, especially considering that, that Platinum is meant to be one of the hardest games to Nuzlocke in the series. Speaking of hard, this Lapras could be kind of annoying considering that my steel moves aren't super effective because they're cancelled out by water. Hopefully though, I'll be able to turn the tables and start para flinching. <laughs> That's what I was talking about annoying strategies. Go, go, para flinch, come on! Yes! Okay, one para flinch success. Can I get a flinch here? Nope! Oh, but at least Hydro Punk missed. Uh, can I get a flinch here? Come on, flinch, you know you want to. Nope! Wow! Two Hydro Pump misses? Really? Okay, that is uncharacteristically lucky of me. And I say uncharacteristically, because I've already seen this whole... Um, I've already played through this whole part, and I know what's going to happen next. You, the viewer, will... Really? Really? You're a moron. You are a moron! Did someone else already do that? Anyway, I've seen what's gonna happen next, and oh boy, you guys are in for a treat. <laughs> but, anyway, I'll save that for later. Goodbye, Espeon, and, um, yeah, we have beaten, um... Wow, she actually does talk about sad things, um... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll just step away from you now. So, this is actually the end of the route, or is it? There's actually a few areas we haven't explored yet, but to get there, we're going to have to go through some dark grass. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm actually going to take care of catching the Pokemon I need right now, just so I don't have to come back later. There are actually quite a few useful Pokemon to be found here, unlike some of the earlier routes, so I'm going to have to get the uh, thing up, am I? So, this is up, let's go search for wild Pokemon. And don't mind this sudden time change, I must have recorded this at a different time. But anyway, 
There's actually some pretty interesting Pokemon available here. In fact, just about everything on this route but one are actually kind of decent. Golduck you should get at higher levels elsewhere, but apart from that, here's one. Here is BHM, and it's at the right level too. So we might want to catch this. Like, I'm probably not going to use this. I might, though. Like, it, it sort of depends. Like... Maybe, uh, if I can find a use for a Psychic type. I already have a Psychic type in, um, oh, and I knew, I knew it, I knew it, yeah. Uh, the moment I used that Thunder Wave, I was like, okay, it probably has synchronized, so I'm gonna get paralyzed, and I did, obviously. But anyway, uh, this thing actually has a pretty different role to the tank, though. It's mostly special based, and it's more of a defensive Pokemon. I actually kind of like BHM. I actually used one of the doubles tournament in Gen 5 actually quite a long time back. It's definitely one of those Pokemon that's better in doubles than in singles because its other ability is the ability that blocks damage from allies' attacks, telepathy. That is an extremely useful ability. Uh, it doubles. Totally useless in singles. But it also gets Ally Shift, uh, I mean Ally Switch or whatever. Ally Switch is an amazingly good move that just is not, and it gets Recover too, as you can see here. Very annoying to catch, but pretty good for a defensive um, supporter in doubles. It's actually a pretty cool Pokemon in double battles. I'd recommend people trying it out. It's actually not that bad. Again, um, you want to use Ally Switch though. I mean, on Smoggin's analysis for it, they basically say if you're not using Ally Switch on BEM, something else can do its job better. But if you are, it's actually one of the best Pokemon that gets Ally Switch. It basically is a priority move that makes you swap places with your partner and swap places with your partner and it's and you basically take whatever attack was meant for them. It's really interesting, especially considering that it's priority. And it kind of served me quite well. Um, I would show you the replay, but annoyingly, I think because it's such an underused move, uh Pokemon Showdown, for some reason, actually cannot animate Ally Switch properly. It doesn't keep track of the Pokemon switching places, so it gets really confusing if you're trying to watch a Pokemon Showdown replay that involves Ally Switch. Um, by the way, I'm not, I wasn't actually using Showdown, uh, because I hate Showdown, but I was using it um, on PokerCheck as a replay viewer, because you can enter battle replay codes and have it actually show you the replay. That's basically what I did back then. Now, if I can find how to spell this name that I'm going to call this, um, I think I've f figured it out. Yeah, it's, a um, yeah, he's two and one of them's capitalized. Uh, I will probably have to explain this nickname because the origin of it is very obscure. Basically, I named it after a pretty obscure villain from an old Carmen San Diego game I, um, grew up with, Dr. Lazard, who was a scientist who turned out to be an alien. Yeah, weird. But it was the best name for a female um, alien thing that I could think of. But anyway, there's another Pokemon here that we want to catch, and it's not that Golduck, as you can probably tell. We can find Wild Shuckles here, and as weird as Shuckle is, uh, like it has absolutely zero attack power, enormous defenses, but pitiful HP. Oh, I just you just got rid of my stab. And don't you hate it when the payback user is the fastest Pokemon on the field? Oh, that's annoying. Thankfully, I got a critical hit just when I needed one. So, I was kind of considering myself pretty lucky at this point, but, oh, you'll see. But anyway, uh, paralyze that Shuckle, not that it's going to do much, because Shuckle is still the slowest Pokemon in the game, even, even like, with on better base speed. I think, actually, no, I think Munchlax is slower. Actually, I'll have to go check that. Yes, Munchlax is slower at 5 base speed to Shuckle's 10, I believe. But, okay, good, we're not, we've got carrying any berries, so Bug Fighter's not going to do much. Of course, nothing, no no offensive move coming from Shuckle is going to do much, considering that it has absolutely pitiful attacking stats. Um, but the worst stats, attacking stats in the game. So, not going to do very much, but as you can see here, its defense is pretty huge, and another critical hit, thankfully, uh, that did... That could have gone very badly, but thankfully, yeah, Shuckle was defensive enough to- Wow! Okay, well, at least that's neutral, but still, it's not going to do much. And I can't risk getting other critical, so I was wondering if I had any netballs. And I do! I have one! This is better work! If this doesn't work, I'm going to be very, very, very angry. Let's see. One. Two. Three. And it worked! Okay, could use my last netball. 
So, we have a Shuckle. Shuckle's massive defensive power might be useful to me. And there's something else about it that might also be useful. I'm... yeah, it's interesting. I have kind of a strategy in mind for this thing, maybe. I haven't tried it out yet, so it might fail miserably, but anyway. Uh, I can think of a perfect nickname for something that has absolutely no attacking power, but enormous defensive ability. I will name this Shuckle... I could have fit this all in with a space, but it kind of looks cool without the space. Lazy Shell! And there's one more Pokémon I want here. Two, when I found it. Stupid Jigglypuffs, they're probably the one thing on this route that just isn't that good at all. Here it is, Altaria. You might be wondering, why do you want an Altaria so much? It's one of the, well, until Drudagon came along, it was probably the worst fully evolved dragon type in the game. This Altaria is a bit special, as you will no doubt see when we fight it. Altaria is a... Damn it. <laughs> well, there goes my paralysis strategy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, and of course, you're going to try and paralyze me and go, Ooh, ooh I got refreshed, you don't. <laughs> I can be paralyzed all I want and cure it. Oh, that's going to be irritating. Speaking of irritating, this. 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 Cotton Guard. This is actually the reason why we want this Altaria. Cotton Guard, it comes with it right off the bat, and it's a stat raising move that gives plus three to defense. Yep, plus three. Nice double flinch there. Plus three. That is absolutely enormous. It also, right off the bat, comes with Dragon Dance, which boosts its attack and speed. You can probably see where I'm going with this. To get such a level disadvantage against the post-game bosses, we're going to have to rely on the stat boosting moves, and this Altaria has stat boosts in absolute abundance. In fact, without even leveling up this Altaria at all, it's going to be an amazing help against most of the most powerful trainers in the game. And we can be thankful that... Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Thunder Wave it now and see if I can catch, and I can always reapply this if it refreshes, because I'm, uh... Yeah, anyway, I can always reapply this. So, basically, I wanted to see if I could get it in a Heal Ball, you know, it being like, um, 1 HP and Paralyzed. Nope, yep, Heal Balls still suck. Why don't I even try? Good thing about catching this Altaria is that it doesn't actually have any physical moves to make use of Dragon Dance with, so... At least that's something. It can't, like, surprise sweep my team out of nowhere or something like that. It's not a Sork. <laughs> Sorks! Um, <laughs> you were kind of preempting me there. Yeah, Dragon Dance kind of worked against you, didn't it? <laughs> now you're actually faster than me, and so um, I'll get my Thunder Waves in after you use Refresh. Yeah, let's stick with the good old Ultra Balls. Uh, I'm not really into, like, I've seen other people who just catch Pokemon in certain Pokeballs because it looks good. I've just tried that for a second, but it doesn't work, so I prefer the... I'd much prefer the tried-and-true method of just using Pokeballs that give the best catch rates. Now, am I the only one who finds Altaria's Pokedex description somewhat disturbing? Like, really? That sounds a little... Ugh. But anyway, I already know what I'm going to name this Altaria. I was kind of glad I got a female one. So, uh, this Altaria shall be named... I, uh, I don't know why I was pausing there. And not after the annoying Pokemon move. But anyway, that is all for Wild Pokemon. That means no more sidebars. It also means a time change. This was, I think, the same day I recorded the last one, but uh, much later on. So, I'm probably going to need a heal soon, but there is actually, as you can tell by the length of the video, quite a bit more to this route that I haven't done yet. You know what? I think I'm going to go restore my team now. Like, I could just run all the way back to the Pokemon Center, but I was too lazy to go through the grass again, so, um... And hey, we're already halfway through this route. We might as well continue on. Not going to revive those uh, ones just yet, but I can see an item over there taunting me. Speaking of taunting me, 
I'm gonna try to fish here because sometimes you can get really, really good Pokemon out of these spots, like as in really high level Pokemon. Will this be one of them? And it's a uh, Basculin. Level 60, which is the highest Basculin I've seen. I think I can go up to level 70, but uh, nope, sorry. Goodbye, Basculin. We don't really need you. So we get a uh, Reaper Cloth. That's interesting. It's not like we'll ever have a Dust uh, Dustlops to evolve with that, and um, I mean, a lot of people consider Dustlops to actually be better than Dust One anyway, but. Anyway, going up this waterfall, again this route was the main reason why we needed waterfall, and this was the main reason why we needed waterfall on this route. I'm going to just explore this other area first. Yes, that's right, the last of the Team Plasma Sages is right here. Remember ages ago where I said that we wouldn't be finding him for a very long time? Well, this is why. Yep, one of the Sages... Uh, is hiding out in Eastern and over, so if you didn't explore the post-game exclusive areas, you will never be able to find all the sages. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a repel here. I'm going to need to restock my repels very soon, but until then, just repelling. And there's nothing here. Oh well. Let's go back and uh, speak to the sage there, because he is the last one we have left, and after... Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, just to satisfy my curiosity, this is probably going to be nothing good at all. It's a Boisel. <sighs> wow, not even a very good Boisel either. Uh, running! Yes, running. I think you can get Flotzels, but anyway. So if we go up and talk to this guy, it is Jallo. I actually forgot we met this guy for the first- Oh wait, uh, he's now mentioning it, Sp Dragon Spiral Tower. And it's kind of interesting that Reshiram's in my party now. That's kind of a nice saying. Like, okay, I will I will say, this guy's dialogue is actually really heartwarming. And he gives us TM what Ike did between Brawl and the new Smash Brothers. Actually, he just switched to his Radiant Dawn design, but I still can't believe some people don't know that, but anyway. That whole New World thing kind of brings back bad flashbacks of Team Flare, but anyway. This guy actually says some pretty inspiring stuff, I will admit. Unfortunately, it's about to be cut short, because it's, uh, a resting time. So, for the last time, here's the culprit, grab him! I'm kind of surprised this guy wasn't the Repentant Sage you see in Black and White 2. It kind of makes sense after all this dialogue. Although apparently Team Plasma still changed him, so... Not entirely sure how Repentant he is, but anyway. And now we've got all of them, we get an interesting bit of dialogue from Luca here. And so, this side quest is over. Now, it's nice to hear that N is still somewhere. I wonder if we will see him again, hint hint. Actually, what I wonder most is who that person who informed Looker of seeing N. Apparently they're in a far off place. I'm thinking Carlos, maybe? That's just my random theory about that. I don't know, maybe. But anyway, we have a hiker to battle, and he has a Hippopotus. And because of uh, this Hippopotus picking up a sandstorm, I think I can show off something that one of my Pokemon has. Let's get Bones in here. Finally, I can put this pre-buffed Overcoat to good use. For a certain definition of good. Yeah, Overcoat is a pretty fair ability in this game. It got a lot better, and I mean a lot better in X and Y. 
But for the time being, at least, well, we can take souls in being immune to weather. Still think it's pretty stupid that they gave it to Rick. What? Oh, of course it would. Yeah, of course it would. This melee credits the theory that the AI sometimes knows when a move is going to activate its additional effect. Because really, there was no reason to use Crunch. It's not very effective after all. No reason to use Crunch there unless they knew it would get the defense drop. So, yeah, maybe the AI does cheat in that regard. It's totally possible. I mean, like, I've seen some games where you can literally prove that the AI cheats just by dissecting the AI scripts. Um, like in a lot of real-time strategy games, these scripts will specifically tell the AI to pull extra resources out of nowhere when it's running out. But in Pokémon, I really wish I could get my hands on the Pokémon AI scripts just to have proof that they cheat. As if we didn't really need enough proof. And goodbye Hippopotas to recoil damage. Apologies that that went a bit long, but um, I wanted to try Toxic Fly Stalling sometime. Oh, okay. Uh, I am most likely going to get blistered if I stay in. That's not really even a word, but oh well. If I stay in, you are probably going to blizzard me, uh, or avalanche me, or something. Probably blizzard. Yep, blizzard. I called it. I totally called it. But from that, and here's the thing I can't really get. Oh, nice for survive. Not nice job surviving that blizzard. I can't really get Iron Man in here, like, okay, well, past me decided Iron Man was a good idea. It's just I'm a little worried about Earthquake. Please don't use Earthquake. Hopefully it'll use Blizzard again, and hit the not very effective. I'll be faster, I will whack it with an Iron Head for super effective damage, and at least bring it down low enough for Toxic to finish it off, unless it's already happened. So, hopefully I can take this thing out before it Earthquakes. Because that would be bad if it did. And it is down. Perfect. So Iron Man did do a good job. Proba Pass. Speaking of Earthquake, Earthquake would be really useful right about now. But, me, derp that I am, I forgot to reteach Earthquake to Batang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Thunder Wave this thing. Not like I really need it, but just for that extra ch chance of it skipping its turns. And here's the problem. I'm going to need to get Bones in, because my best bet at this point, considering that Zangus is uh, with close combat, is fainted, and I and my rules say that I'm not allowed to use revives during battle. I mean, revives outside of battle is fine, but I cannot revive during battle. My best bet is Bone Rush, and that means I'm going to have to switch in on a discharge, and hopefully I don't get paralyzed. I'm not to rest. Okay, good thing it didn't remove its paralysis, even though its HP was full. So, one bone, two, and of course it would be two. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness the point where my luck started to turn around, and I am in a very, very bad way. Bone brush number two. Also two times. And of course it would rest. Ugh, if I had hit more times, I probably would have finished it, but yeah. Ugh. And is it just me, or does Pro Pass look terrifying while it's sleeping? Oh, seriously, those blank eyes! Ugh! Critical hit, that's nice. And two! Again! As of, um, Gen 5, I believe this move has a 33.3, .3, as in one third percent chance of hitting twice every time. I hit twice three times in a row. The chance of that happening is roughly 3%. Yeah! Of course, it always happens for you, and of course, the AI always hits five times. Ah, stupid cheating AI. Now, this is kind of interesting. There may not be a move called Mountainfall, but there is Rock Climb. Essentially the same concept that he was looking for. Now, this is probably a case of Lost in Translation, because Waterfall's Japanese name, I believe, is actually explicitly Waterfall Climb. Uh, and that would mean that there is no move called Mountain Climb. There is not, but there is Rock Climb. I think Rock Climb is actually written in Katakana, though. As in Roku Kuraimu, rather than actually in Japanese. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use my revives outside of battle here and heal up, because it's time for an Ace Trainer. And we all know how difficult they can be. Ace Trainers are actually some of the biggest challenges in a No Experience run. That's why I like to show everything. Most people who do no experience runs only show gym leaders, but I want to show that other random trainers can actually be quite challenging as well, especially ace trainers, as you're about to see. So, let's put you up the head of the party. I really want to reteach Earthquake, actually. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that now, I think. Yeah, uh, that last battle taught me I really should have retaught Earthquake, uh, so I'll reteach it now before I forget. 
Yeah, Earthquake would have been really useful against that Pro Pass. At least Bone Rush is actually pretty good because it bypasses Sturdy regardless. But anyway, uh, get rid of Flash for Earthquake. And the PP change will not matter because Earthquake only has a max of 10 PP anyway. So it's time for another Ace Trainer. Really? Um, you'll lose all those times that you lost until you won. That is really weird, anyway. Ace Trainer Kip, okay. Absol! Oh, I really love Mega Absol. It is just so awesome, especially Magic Bouncing, Blizzy Toxics, and Thunder Waves. But what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I could just go try and. Me first. Well, that's gonna fail now that I've got agility up. Because me first only works if you're faster, but let's take this thing. Let's beat your bash this thing. Hopefully I'll get the attack buff, which is gonna be very Ooh, I'm real I'm seriously not quite too at KOing. Also, this Absol could have super luck, and that could be uh that's not quite half, but. I'm going to go ahead and just do an Earthquake because I want to conserve my Meteor Bash PP and I'm worried that this guy might have healing items. Well, we're going to find out anyway because he's in red HP. Oh, okay. And no healing items, so Absol is gone. I will need to heal though myself because... Oh yeah, sure, now I get a critical hit. Uh... Dodrio, eh? I don't really think Dodrio has much that can damage the tank. Like, I mean, unless it's got hit power ground or something. Because, really, the Rio only learns, like, normal and flying moves. And, like, Steel Wing or something, but that's not gonna do much. That's still doing quite a lot for a not very effective attack, but it could be worse. Oh, Thrash actually is kinda bad. That's mess- yeah, that's pretty power- And of course that would miss one day. Yeah, it would. I'm gonna have to go for another Agility to be faster. Just endure this Thrash. Ugh, so close. But, anyway. Uh, let's get agility up too faster, I'll have to heal again. Uh, but yeah, I remember the days when Dodrero used to be the best normal flying in the game. Now we have Staraptor, <laughs> which completely blows Dodrio out of the water. But I mean, Dodrio used to be like the best normal flying you could get, so that was kind of interesting. And it's confused. Watch it never hit itself. And watch me never get any attack boost out of Meteor Bash. Oh, it actually did hit itself. Okay, um, didn't expect that. Let's, uh, Z headbutt. Hopefully this will finish you. And it did! Okay, what's coming out? Wall Raid! Oh, that could be bad. Oh, the thing I'm worried about about Wall Raid is it might have sheer cold, and it probably will. Oh, Ice Fang. Not that bad. Not that bad. And there's no way we can actually out-level this thing, so, uh, oh, I can't really switch out to Bones either, because they'll get blizzarded or something like that. Come on, Iron Man, you can Iron Head this thing. No! Of course it would do that, and of course it would hit first try. That's a 38% chance of hitting though, still pretty low, but of course the AI gets it first try. Um, close combat? Maybe? Hopefully? Come on, Makusho, take this thing down! Close combat! Give it everything you got! Oh, oh, that's bad. And with that defense drop, I'm not gonna survive Blizzard, and of course it's gonna Blizzard me, and I'm not gonna survive this, so yeah, gone. Yep, totally gone. Bye bye, gone. Yes, of course I would, gone. Oh, that limits my options because Bones is weak to Blizzard. Uh, let's get back in there. Delete! Come on! Please be faster and take it out with a Meteor Mash. Finish it! Finish it! Finish it all! 33% chance. Second time. Of course. Well, I was pretty frantic at this point. Come on, Breakout. You could do this. Channel the fury of awesome Gold Ducks as an Aqueduct. Finish it with strength! Come on! Come on! You could do it! You could do it! Oh, no, 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 no! You couldn't do it. Three times! Three times! That was 39%. The combined chance of that is still... Oh, please be faster, otherwise I'm gonna get blizzarded. Please be faster. You are! Thank you! Now, if somehow this doesn't KO, and it, that could have ended very badly! 
Oh! Damn you, Kip! Seriously! No, 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 Not what you're saying. No, no, it's try to hit with five when it KOs. Hit all five, because I'm the AI. Yay me! I hate you so much. Oh, look at me. I'm the AI. I hit with hacks moves all the time. I wiped out most of your entire team with sheer cold. Ooh! This is why I despise Battle Tower, Battle Subway, everything. Because this, this right here, this right here is why, yeah, this is how I always end in Battle Subway, Battle Tower, whatever you want to call it. And here's the entrance to a bunch of tribe, but we're going to have to heal before we go in there, so let's just sit back and wallow in our misery for the time being. This right here is why the AI is a 100% proven cheater. I don't care what you say, I know those had slightly higher chances of hitting the normal because of, you know, um, whatever, level difference, but still, none of those were higher than 40%. The AI hits that three times in a row. If they do that, when you're in like Battle Subway or whatever, you lose immediately, no questions asked. And they will, they always do. They always do. No exceptions. I bet if, if I dissected the AI coding, I'd find somewhere in the code that says, what are KO moves? Accuracy, 30% if used by human, 90% if used by AI. Because that's seriously, there's only that's the only way it could be. But anyway, at least I can come back here and restock my repels. There's really nothing more I can say about that. I am mad now. I am very mad. I'm very mad. And I'm in the mood to take my rage out on some people. So, I hear there are some people in the Abundant Shrine. Let's pay them a little visit. I'm going to buy so many Hyper Potions, I'm probably never going to need to buy more Hyper Potions again. After I've done that, I'll buy some more stuff. And then, we'll pay those people at Abundant Shrine a visit. A visit consisting of lots and lots of fire and revenge. I don't care who they are, they are the AI, and the AI will feel my righteous fury next time.